Chapter 11, Part 3. Kenny slammed the book shut and the crowd jumped back in their seats. He asked aloud with the fiery feeling dancing on his tongue, who among us shall vanquish this menacing scourge from our land? I shall, announced George in a clear voice. Everyone turned, turned toward the royal box, watched him astride down the aisle, escorted by beautiful Charlotte. She was draped in elegant ornate white robes with ribbons and flowers wrapped around her head. The knight was adorned in his golden armor, which had been polished to a mirror-like shine. He held his decorated shield in one hand, Charlotte's arm in the other, and a crimson silken cape billowed and danced about behind them both as they walked toward the battlefield. First, a kiss from a fair maiden, George proclaimed, for this shall be my final day upon the battlefield. Charlotte hugged the old man and pecked him on the cheek. Seeing this, the tips of Kenny's ears grew warm. He shook off the feeling and continued. Great knight, not only will you need a courageous heart and beloved spirit to dispatch this beast, but you will also need magically enchanted weapons. Say now, have you these instruments of carnage? I do, replied George, displaying his sword and shield for all to see, but alas, he looked down glumly. They are not enchanted. Then they will not work, and the death will most certainly greet you on the battlefield today, Kenny declared. The audience rumbled with anticipation. Unless, he said, in a I just got an idea tone, unless there's a wizard, a mage here among us who can enchant your weapons. He gestured toward the crowd. Is there anyone present? who can perform such a supernatural trick. Heads turned this way and that as they assembled up. the assembly of spectators looked to one another. Porky's dad yelled out, get on with it, but he was immediately hushed. Kenny took a deep breath as he stood facing the hundreds of onlookers. Come on, he whispered under his breath, let's go. And then someone stood up in the back of the gathering near the king's tower and shouted, Hello there, whispered murmurs through the crowd and everyone craned their necks to see who it was. An elderly figure wearing a low brimmed hat and dressed in dark robes, embroidered with strange symbols and stars, leaned on an old pitchfork as he rose. I can enchantify your weapons if that's what you'd like, he said in a gravelly voice. The crowd parted as the mysterious character hobbled down to join Kenny as his and his companions at the center of the air arena. He walked up to George and announced, put your sword away, it will do you no good. Instead, use this enchantified pitchfork. He rubbed the mud and dirt off the fork, revealing shimmering golden tines. He held the pitchfork high so that all in the audience could see. Pin the dragon's tail to the ground, he continued, so that you may tie not and defeat the beast. The wizard then pulled a bottle from his robes and poured the liquid contents onto the knight's shield. This will protect you from the monster's fiery breath. Now, he paused looking at the audience. Now you're ready. The mass of viewers burst into applause as the old wizard hobbled through them back toward the seats. As they congratulated and patted the madge with cheers of praise, Kenny could feel his heart begin to race. So it is done, he declared, and all heads turned back to focus on the little buck. Then there is only one thing that remains. There is, George replied in a puzzled tone. You need bait to lure the drake from his smoky den, Kenny answered. The fiery feeling was strong now. It leapt out of his mouth and onto his shoulders. Is my royal challenge not enough to bring the beast out of hiding? George asked. No, it will not do, Kenny answered, answered Kenny. He was controlling not just the fiery anxiety, but the entire crowd as well. He pointed to Charlotte, but she will, the audience gasped. Brave knight, there is but one thing a dragon finds irresistible, the sweet taste of a maiden fair. Find this girl to the tree, and her screams for help will surely lure the beast from his devil den. 
No, no, some voices from the audience cried, but most were shocked into stupefied silence. George grabbed Charlotte by the wrists and tied her to the gnarled oak closet, cl gnarled oak closest to the cave's entrance. At this, the unsettled crowd gasped and moaned louder than before, but the din could not block out Charlotte's pleas for help as she tried to free herself from her binds. Ignoring Charlotte's sobs, George threw off his cape and readied his weapons. Kenny stood at the entrance of the cave, spread out both hands, then cried, then let the battle begin.